In this lesson, we'll learn part one of the general strategy for answering sentence equivalence questions. The steps are as follows. First, read the entire sentence to understand the big picture. In other words, what idea is the sentence expressing? Now, if the sentence is quite long or complex, paraphrase the main idea to yourself. Now, as you're reading the sentence, be sure to identify words and phrases that provide context for the blank. In particular, pay very close attention to descriptive words and phrases, as well as relationship words. Once you've identified key words and phrases that provide context for the missing word, predict the word that fits the blank. More importantly, be sure to make this prediction before checking the answer choices. If you don't make this prediction first, you will waste time later on trying to verify whether or not each answer choice completes the sentence. Alright, once you've made your prediction, check the answer choices and use scratch paper to record your responses. As you're checking the answer choices, beware of trap answers. And finally, once you've found two words that appropriately fill the blank, be sure to confirm that those two words create sentences with the same meaning. Okay, so that's the general strategy. Now before we examine each step in greater detail, I want to point out that the second step here is by far the most important concept of the general strategy. If we're unable to identify words and phrases that provide context for the missing word, then there's no way we can determine which words best complete the sentence. So given the importance of this step, we'll cover descriptive words in this lesson and relationship words in a future lesson once we've had time to practice with a few questions. Now, since the strategy is all about context, the main question you should be asking yourself as you read each sentence is, does this word or phrase provide context for the blank? Does this provide context for the blank? And so on. For a great number of questions, the context will be in the form of an adjective or adverb. These are words and phrases that describe things or actions. To set this up, I'd like to first examine a sentence equivalence question that you'd never see on the GRE. As you can see here, there's no information to suggest which answer choices are correct. In fact, there are several pairs of answers that work here. The problem is that this sentence does not provide any contextual information about the missing word, and GRE sentence equivalence questions always provide contextual information. So let's examine a sentence that does provide contextual information. Now as we read this relatively simple sentence, we're keeping an eye out for descriptive words that provide context. So here we have the word structured, which describes the training. What kind of training? Structured training. Here we have the word guide, which describes the dog. What kind of dog? A guide dog. And finally, we have the phrase for the blind, which describes guide dog. What kind of guide dog? A guide dog for the blind. At this point, we need to determine which words or phrases, if any, provide context for the missing word. Well, the sentence tells us that bubbles has some characteristic that would prevent it from completing the training. To be more specific, the structured training. So what kind of characteristic in a dog would prevent it from completing structured training? Well, if the dog were unstructured, then it would not be able to complete structured training. So this is the prediction we might make before checking the answer choices. Now, of course, you may have predicted a different word, like scattered or unfocused, and that's fine. All that matters is that you have an idea of the kind of word we should be expecting here. Now at this point, we'll write our prediction on our scratch paper next to the number of the question. That way, we can refer to it later to keep our thoughts about answers on track. From here, we'll begin checking the answer choices. As we do so, we want to use good scratch work. So we'll write the letters A through F beneath our prediction. Now, if we know that a certain answer is not correct, we can put a line through that answer choice. If we know a certain answer is correct, we can place a check mark next to the letter. If we're not certain, we can place a squiggly line. And if we don't know what the word means at all, we can write a question mark. Okay, now let's check the answer choices, beginning with answer choice A, large. Does this match up with our prediction? No, it does not. Now at this point, you must avoid the urge to try to make the answer choice fit. 
Some will argue that it could be the case that the dog's large size might cause it to be unable to complete the training. However, we're not looking for words that could fit. We're looking for words that are supported by the contextual clues in the sentence. This is very important, so I'll say it again. We are not looking for words that could possibly fit. We are looking for words that are supported by the contextual clues in the sentence. In this sentence, the contextual clue is that the training is structured, and there's no reason to believe that a large dog would be unable to complete structured training. So we'll eliminate answer choice A. What about answer choice B? Does this have a similar meaning to our prediction? No, being delicate has nothing to do with completing structured training, so eliminate it. When we continue checking answer choices, the only two words that convey the same meaning as our prediction are disobedient and headstrong. A dog that is disobedient or headstrong would have a difficult time completing structured training. So answer choices C and E are the best answers. Now, are these the only words that would complete the sentence? No. However, they are the best words among our answer choices, and they are supported by the contextual clues in the sentence. Now, it's important to point out that this entire question hinged on only one descriptive word. Furthermore, if we change structured to physically challenging, then the context changes completely. In this case, what kind of dog would have difficulty completing physically challenging training? In this case, our prediction might be something like unhealthy, in which case answer choices B and F are supported by the contextual clues in the sense. So as you can see, descriptive words play a very large role in solving sentence equivalence questions. Okay, now it's your turn. You might want to pause the video now and try this question before continuing. Okay, as we read this sentence, several descriptive words and phrases should pop out. Now, of these words, the ones that appear to provide context for the missing word tell us that historical fiction novels do something to the two divergent genres of history and fiction in such a smooth manner that it's difficult to distinguish between an imagined tale and a true life account. In other words, historical fiction novels combine two different things such that they're hard to tell apart. So let's predict Unify, which we'll write on the scrap paper along with the letters from A to F. Now that we have a prediction, let's check the answer choices beginning with answer choice A. Now adulterate means to taint or make impure. This answer is possible since one genre is infiltrating the other. So let's keep it for now, but since we're not entirely sure, let's use a squiggly line. Next we have divulge, which means to reveal. This is not a good fit for our prediction, so we can eliminate B. Next is amalgamate, which means to unite. This is an excellent fit for our prediction, so we'll keep it. Next is stymie, which means to confuse. This is not a good fit, so we'll eliminate D. Answer choice E, conflate, is also a synonym for unify, so we'll keep it. And finally we have repudiate, which means to renounce or deny. This answer does not fit very well, so we can eliminate it. We now have three answer choices remaining. Now since adulterate has a connotation of making things impure, we should realize that it's not really supported as well as answer choices C and E are. In addition, there is no other word among the answer choices that has the same connotation. So we would not be able to create two sentences that have the same meaning. So for these reasons, we can eliminate A, which leaves us with C and E, the correct answers. Now we should also notice that C and E create sentences that have the same meaning. This is also very important. Okay, that's enough for one lesson. Let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned the general strategy for all sentence equivalence questions. In future lessons, we'll examine relationship words, as well as some trap answers to watch out for. Before we get to those lessons, however, we have some practice questions for you to try first.